Welcome to this week's travel tip. Today we're going to talk about birthplaces of a couple of famous people. An automaker, an aviator, an outlaw, a famous baby, a movie star, and a couple of presidents. We'll start in Iowa at the birthplace of John Wayne. He was born as Marion Robert Morrison on May 26, 1907 in the small town of Winterset, Iowa. It's a neat as a pin four-room home and it was built in the 1880s. Miles away, you can stand where John Wayne made his last appearance on camera in the Alabama hills of Lone Pine, California, and it was for a 19 1978 commercial. Here is a picture of Walter P. Chrysler's home where he grew up between the years of 1889 and 1897 in Ellis, Kansas. Out in the yard, there was a Chrysler Cordoba. I don't know if any of you remember the Chrysler Cordoba, but I certainly do. My stepdad let me use his Chrysler Cordoba on special times. Next is the home where Harry S. Truman was born on May 8, 1884 in Lamar, Missouri. If you'll notice, Harry S. Truman does not have a period behind the S in his name. It's just S because it doesn't stand for anything except for the letter S. One of the neat things in the home is their visitor's register. They have the old register open to a page dated April 19, 1959, when Harry Truman visited his home. Next stop is the 1845 family farm east of Kearney, Missouri, where Jesse Woodson James was born in 1847. He was originally buried on the site, but later his grave was moved to the town. Over in Omaha, see the birth site of Gerald R. Ford. However, what you'll find are some gardens that were dedicated in 1977 to President Gerald R. Ford. It represents his birth site in Omaha, and it commemorates the birth of, I bet you didn't know his name was really, Leslie King Jr. Leslie was born on July 14, 1913, in his grandparents' three-story, 14-room, ornate Victorian house. When his mother married Gerald Ford of Michigan in 1916, he adopted her three-year-old son and changed his name to Gerald Rudolph Ford Jr. Way up northeast in New Hampshire, we went to the Pierce Homestead. The homestead was built in 1804 by Benjamin Pierce, a general in the American Revolution, twice governor of New Hampshire, and father of Franklin Pierce, the 14th president of the United States. Franklin Pierce was actually born in Hillsborough on November 23, 1804, and the family occupied this dwelling shortly thereafter. At the age of 27, Pierce became a member of the U.S. Congress and at the age of 33, a U.S. Senator. He was the youngest man to hold either office up to that time. He served as a Brigadier General in the Mexican-American War, and he was an advocate of states' rights. He was known as Young Hickory of the Granite Hills, primarily because of his repeal of the Missouri Compromise by signing the 1854 Kansas Nebraska Act while serving as the 14th U.S. President, history records him as one of the least favorite presidents. A major event of his presidency was the Gadsden Purchase. Arizona and New Mexico was purchased from Mexico to construct a railroad. Next, let's head to Fort Mandan in North Dakota. This is an exciting place. This is actually a replica of the fort where the Corps of Discovery, Lewis and Clark, spent a brutal winter and where they met Sacagawea. This is where Sacagawea had her baby that she named Tom. Sacagawea had been kidnapped and was actually removed from her homeland in Idaho and the teenager became one of two brides of a French-Canadian trapper by the name of Toussaint Charbonneau. When Lewis and Clark learned that she knew the Shoshone language, they invited the 44-year-old fur trapper and his pregnant wife to join the Corps as translators. The couple moved into the Corps' compound at Fort Mandan and Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau, as his father named him, was born at the Woodworm Fort on February 11, 1804. His mother and the Army Corps members call their newest member Little Pomp or Pompey, which means firstborn in Shoshone. Interestingly enough, in California, at the famous St. Louis Rey de Francia mission east of Oceanside, we learned that when it had become an army outpost after secularization, the secularization is when the missions became part of the state and no longer served as missions. And during that time, this particular mission became a U.S. Army outpost during the Mexican-American War. And based at the outpost for a short time in 1847 to 1848 was Sacagawea's son, Jean Baptiste Charbonneau. He was a Mormon battalion guide and he served as head of the Indian sub-agency. Now let's move back into Kansas, and in Atchison, Kansas, 
we visited the Amelia Earhart Birthplace Museum. Amelia was born there on July 24, 1897, in the home of her grandparents. This was a beautiful home, which was constructed in 1860. The house is filled with memorabilia of this famous female aviator that was lost and never to be heard of again. All kinds of suspicions around her death include, she's really on an island with a friend. She's lost at sea. Who knows? Maybe we'll never know what happened to famous Amelia Earhart. She made her last flight in 1937 in a Lockheed Electra 10E. She became missing en route from Leigh, New Guinea to Howland Island. Earhart was declared deceased on January 5, 1939. All of these and so many more famous birthplaces are found in the Unclassic Road Trip series in the Eastern United States, Central United States, and Western United States. American history. Love it. Learn it. Experience it. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Steve Roman, to see our weekday nuggets. Thank you.